Traveling to space costs a fortune, but there's a way to make it affordable. You step into an elevator, push the button, and voila! You're flying to the stars, all thanks to nanotubes. But then, something hits the elevator on the way. You're stuck inside, and now you're doomed to float in space forever. Now, if you want to travel in space, get ready to shell out around 55 million bucks. But in the near future, you'll probably be able to travel to space with just the push of a button without breaking the bank. Because space elevators might come into play. While the idea of galactic lifts seems like something out of a sci-fi movie, it is a real possibility that could revolutionize space travel. With an estimated cost of $8 billion, space elevators could be a one-time investment that would last us forever. NASA alone spends around $2.7 million on rocket fuel per minute. To launch a rocket, they need to pay up to $178 million. These costs could be significantly reduced with the use of elevators. Most super-tall buildings on Earth have a massive foundation to help with their balance and weight. As you look up, they get thinner and thinner. Even the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa, is massive at the bottom and narrow at the top. If we wanted to construct something like a gigantic lift, we would need an enormous amount of concrete to build a foundation for it, which goes against the point of saving some cash. Now, get a string, tie a ball at the end of it, and start spinning it. The string in your hand will stay in one place, and the ball will revolve around your hand. This is called centrifugal force, and the elevator will work in the same way. The ball will be the base in space, and the rope will hang toward Earth. The station from where we would enter the elevator would be in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and the line would extend from there. For this to be possible, the line must be perfectly synchronized with Earth's rotation. Otherwise, it would simply break or wrap around the Earth like a scarf. Also, the orbit the line would be following should be a perfect circle, because the line wouldn't be able to get shorter or extend. A bunch of research has been done using algebra to find the ideal solution. Wait a second, there's a use for algebra? Never mind. Meanwhile, I won't bore you with the math. We'll go straight to the point where the precise distance from the station in the Atlantic to the one in space must be 22,236 miles above the Earth, where the geosynchronous orbit starts. There, the four outward forces are much stronger than the downward force. That's why the station would stay in one place. When you construct a house or a building, you start from the bottom going up. But to create this engineering wonder, we would need to do everything in reverse and start at the top. The main problem here would be the weight. If the line was too heavy, it would disrupt the orbit, and the conveyor dumbwaiter host would not work. So we need to balance the station in space to ensure it worked flawlessly. Steel is one of the most robust materials on Earth. The cable in every lift is made from steel. But when you need a 22,236-mile-long cable, hmm, things can get tricky. Steel is hard to break, but it's cumbersome. And when you have to use a lot of it, problems start to arise. We use heavy steel a lot in construction, but we have lighter materials that might put less stress on the station and eliminate this problem. Also, the line would have to be tapered because, at the end point, there would be close to zero stress but it would still have to be thicker than really needed due to a bunch of safety factors. At the start, the rope would be around 0.5 inches. After using some complicated math, we can figure out the thickness at the end, which is a number so long I am unable to pronounce it. But believe me, it's a big one. So steel is off the list. Another candidate is Kevlar, which is five times stronger than steel. And if we added such materials as carbon and titanium into the mix, the strength would increase tenfold. The line would have a diameter of around 262 to 557 feet. This is drastically smaller than the diameter of the steel cable could be. The bad news is that doing this is too pricey. So if we don't find the ideal medium to build a cable, the idea of the space elevator will just be a massive waste of time. If only we had some magically light material with the power of 60 gigapascals, which would have a taper ratio of 1.6. Oh wait, we actually do have this unique material. It's called 
carbon nanotube. It has a strength of 130 gigapascals, which is much more than we need. Nanotubes are made out of carbon and are 100,000 times thinner than a human hair. This material is solid and has good conductive power, which is possible thanks to its unique atomic structure. We use this product in many things, from batteries to optics, and it can be modified entirely and adapted for more uses. Bradley Edwards is the guy responsible for this crazy idea. NASA was looking for new innovations, and they said, don't do anything too crazy and start building a space hoist. I guess Bradley took this as a challenge and started working on the elevator. Edwards wrote a paper about a galactic conveyor. When he published it, he expected many people to find flaws in his work. But surprisingly, nobody did. His work was spot on. He came up with the idea of strapping a nanotube line to a rocket and launching it into space. The other end of the rope would fall onto Earth, and robots would use this rope to climb up and make it longer so we could start building an elevator space station. After this, the elevator could start transporting everything, from solar panels to tourists. In the future, space tourism could be totally possible. Who knows? We might even go on vacations in space. Hey, looking for some atmosphere for your getaway? Well, don't come here, we don't have any. Oops, probably not a good advertising slogan, huh? Meanwhile, a couple of years ago, we could only create microscopic carbon nanotubes. But as time went on, much more research was done to make them bigger. Now they reach up to a few inches. In 20 years, they could be miles long. Carbon costs $28 per ounce. If we do the math, we would see that we would need around $1 billion to build a lift. Yeah, it sounds expensive, but it's a long-term solution to space travel, and it can actually save us a lot of money in the long run. Now, everything looks perfect on paper. But NASA's main reason why they chose not to go along with this project is that right now, there are probably more than 128 million objects floating in orbit, and they might pose a real threat to the elevator. The lift could be made to withstand a few hits now and then, but getting hammered nonstop is not part of the plan. Still, Bradley argues that tons of monitoring devices track space debris. Thus, the elevator could avoid them all. Now, if something hit the elevator or the line somehow broke, the consequences would not be too bad. If there were no passengers on board, of course. If the line got cut, the elevator would simply float away into space, posing no threat to people on Earth. In Japan, engineers are trying to build a space elevator. The lift could be used for space mining, too. We could easily cover the cost of the entire elevator by collecting asteroids, because some of them are made of expensive metals. We could mine them and quickly bring them back to Earth. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.